for the most of us, crowdfunding doesn't work. And the numbers support it. I've been saying this for years. And um, most crowdfunding is actually like um, a way to sell products or a different way to sell products to the crowd under the illusion that they're helping to get something before everyone else. And case in point, all you need to do is go to crowdfunding micro drone and you'll see a drone that you can buy in China, the very drone you can buy in China sold for I think like $40 a piece and you can get them for $14. There's so much abuse on crowdfunding it's not even funny. But that's just a small part of the problem. You know, crowdfunding success really deems on your ability to access capital networks, whether it's through social media, through the power of the people, um, or um, via leveraging the media, because you have funding to do it. It all comes down to getting the word out there. Sometimes if you're lucky, like some kid on the on the, on the the bus recording some bus driver, hey, I want to go on a vacation, raises like $700,000. $700,000 to send a bus driver on a vacation. I mean, why would anyone basically give to that? There is a lot of madness in the crowdfunding space. And ultimately, it's not the solution. It's a solution, but it's not the solution. So, I've been in the crowdfunding space since its inception. I've been in the Bitcoin space since its inception. And ultimately, um, what needs to happen is a completely new paradigm shift. And I'm going to call this new paradigm sh shift social capitalism. Social capitalism. What is social capitalism? It isn't communism. Let me explain what communism is for those who think, you know, social capitalism is, is COVID, communism. Communism. Communism is basically government-controlled economy. Communism basically is where a government says, listen, we're going to pay for the, the trains and the train stations, everything else, and everyone's going to work for this amount. And that's not what social capitalism is. Social capitalism is, or another word for social capitalism, think of it as open capitalism. And you may say, well, that's an oxymoron, open capitalism. Well, in fact, capitalism is not is not open. It's far from open. There are the haves and the have-nots. That comes from communism. And the haves and have-nots, you can think of those, the 1% and the 99%. That's new names for the haves and have-nots. 99% and the 1%. In social capitalism, it's all about leveraging things like crowdfunding to launch companies like the next Google, the next Microsoft, but everyone who contributes to that campaign becomes an equity shareholder in that new company, social capitalism. And ultimately, the company is mandated in their articles of incorporation and their bylaws to reinvest 80% of their net profits after paying everyone's salary, after paying off all, you know, uh, reinvest 80% of the net profits back into launching, supporting, or scaling up new ideas. Think of these new ideas called found-ups. They're not startups because startup is tied to capitalism or closed capitalism. Did you, could you invest in Google when it was in its inception stage? No. Could you invest in Microsoft? No. Could you invest in Dell or any of these other billion dollar companies? Coca-Cola, uh, Dell, Monsanto, no, they're all closed. They're closed systems. You could not participate in their creation and benefit. Now, accredited investors, millionaires, the 1% could. 
because there were laws in place through the SEC that basically stated only millionaires could invest in these ideas. These laws now have come down, and this is the great opportunity, and this is what makes FoundUps really exciting, is that now we can launch the next Google, the next Dell, and other things. Now, the problem is, is there is no system in place for it. What's happening now is the startup is trying to leverage some of your capital in order to launch their ideas that they own. In FoundUps, it's very different. Everyone becomes a stakeholder of FoundUps. FoundUps launch multiple ideas, so they all launch under the same umbrella. So, for example, I have my, found, my um, uh, HornetHunter.com FoundUp. That's part of FoundUps Corp. That's owned by those stakeholders of FoundUps Corp. I have um, basically um, um, Film Support Japan. I just went and did film support for uh, a company out of South Africa for the last three months. That is owned, that project is owned by FoundUps. 80% of that capital now is going back into launching more FoundUps. And these next FoundUps are, for example, multimedia FoundUp that I'm working on and so on. Now, this is a long-term vision. This is not a short-term version. We're talking about five years, 10 years out. My life is dedicated to launching a new business model which is selfless. The startup is a selfish business model. We need a selfless business model that ultimately looks after for the interests of our planets and its stakeholders. We included, the animals included, in an, a fair and equitable way and not place any one over the over advantage of the other. We are all animals. We are just, you know, animals with big brains. We're all animals. And we all have an equal right claim to this planet. And we need to stop destroying it. And we need to start fixing all the problems. And let's talk about these problems. You know, you go to a beach, any beach, anywhere, you're going to see all this junk. Where did all this junk come from? Well, it came from these closed corporations who ultimately sold this product and took the dividends for this product and gave it to a few people and say, you know what, the mess isn't our problem. Even though we made the pet bottle or the plastic bottle, even though we made the Coke bottle, even though we made these syringes or anything else, you know what, once we sell it, it's no longer our problem. Well, that's the selfish business model, what I call closed capitalism model. And the open capitalistic model and the, and the social capitalism model basically says, yes, we have responsibility for this. And you know what, we're going to, not only that, invest in projects to help clean up these beaches, invest in things. And they said, well, we are doing that. Well, are they doing it on your beach? No, they're not. They may be doing it, oh, we're giving a little money here and a little money there. They need to be responsible for every beach on the planet. If there is a product, now here's the difference with FoundUps. Imagine you're walking down the beach and you see a FoundUps bottle. Now you are a FoundUps stakeholder. What are you gonna do with that bottle? You know what, you're gonna pick it up. Why? Because you are a stakeholder of FoundUps. Think of it as a global co-op for doing and launching good ideas. And all of a sudden, by changing the business model from a closed to an open one, from, you know, from um, a selfish to a selfless one, we change everything. And in changing everything, we may just save our planet. Visit foundups.com. My name is Mike Trout. Just sharing with you the reality that we have the opportunity to save our planet. We just need foundups. And I'm here in Japan launching it.